To our White House correspondent from our D.C. team, John Decker, is traveling with President Biden to Japan for the annual G7 summit. He has more on what we can expect during that three-day meeting. When President Biden joins the leaders of the world's wealthiest democracies for the G7 summit on Friday, he'll arrive armed with an agenda. The war in Ukraine is now entering its 15th month and has dominated the focus of the G7 since last year's meeting hosted by Germany in the Bavarian Alps. John Kirby is the spokesman for the National Security Council. We want to make sure all of us in the G7 that, that President Zelensky has what he needs, the tools, the capabilities, the training uh, that he needs to be able to, to, uh, to go on the offensive and when he chooses. For this year's summit in Hiroshima, host Japan wants to take aim at China. Beijing, the U.S. and its allies argue, has bullied G7 members on a variety of economic and trade issues by hampering or blocking foreign competition and also by failing to adequately protect foreign intellectual property. And we've got to make sure that we that we can compete, which means you got to make sure that the playing field is level or as level as possible. Um, and uh, China doesn't play fair. The White House says the G7 will also address efforts to contain North Korea, as well as energy, food and climate security. To wean industry uh, and, uh, and populations off of fossil fuels onto clean energy, that, that is a huge adjustment. Um, and it, 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 again, it's going to take a while, but uh, it is the future. President Biden will also need to reassure his counterparts that the debt ceiling deadlock with Congress will soon be resolved and that the U.S. will not default on its debt obligations. It's important that the world sees the United States as the stable uh, power that it is uh, and that our economic strength uh, is not putting at jeopardy our strength in other areas of national security. In Washington, I'm John Decker.